Imagine gazing down at Earth from the vastness of space and spotting a man-made structure so immense it rivals the visibility of natural landmarks. This marvel of human engineering, akin to the Great Wall of China, isn't just a testament to our ancestors' ingenuity, it's a modern feat visible from space. What is this colossal structure? Stick around to find out as we first explore the mystery behind the massive wall in China. The Great Wall of China is a profound legacy left by various dynasties throughout history. The earliest records trace back to the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, which documented attempts to fortify the northern borders against invaders. Around 221 BC, with the rise of the Qin Dynasty, significant strides were made in wall construction. Under Emperor Qin Shi Huang, the unification of various regional walls, initially built with tamped earth and local materials, began, creating a consolidated defense system against northern threats and laying the foundation for future expansions. As the Han Dynasty took over, they extended the wall further into Mongolia, primarily to protect the vital Silk Road for trade and strategic movements. They innovatively used materials like reeds and willow branches in the earth layers to strengthen the fortifications, suggesting an intent to preserve this time capsule. These materials' adaptability and durability contributed to the wall's longevity. During the Ming Dynasty, after the Mongol invasions, the Great Wall underwent its most significant reconstruction. The Ming reinforced the wall with stones and bricks and introduced sophisticated architectural features like battlements, watchtowers, garrison stations, and troop barracks. This era is responsible for much of what we recognize today as the Great Wall, symbolizing the pinnacle of centuries of defensive architecture. The grand historian, Sima Qian, offers rich historical accounts of these developments, providing invaluable insights into the construction processes, strategic imperatives, and the harsh conditions faced by laborers. His writings highlight the immense human effort and significant costs endured during the wall's early phases, painting a vivid picture of ancient Chinese society's drive to protect and prosper. In the 20th century, systematic archaeological studies began to unravel the Great Wall's mysteries further. Teams from China and around the world conducted meticulous research, unearthing artifacts, and materials. These findings have been crucial in dating different segments of the wall and shedding light on the diverse construction methods used over the centuries. Excavations revealed significant regional variations in construction materials. Granite was used in the rugged northern terrains for its abundance and durability, while rammed earth, or hangu, was common in flatter plains due to its economy and availability. This adaptive construction strategy reflected the varying geographic and resource conditions across the vast stretches of the wall. Early segments of the Great Wall were more than simple earthworks, wooden frameworks were integrated to enhance structural integrity and resist erosion. In stone-rich areas, large stones were used as foundational bases and primary building blocks. Wood was essential for constructing gates, towers, and reinforcing sections of the wall, though it was vulnerable to decay and fire. During the Ming Dynasty, advancements in construction materials and techniques significantly evolved. The use of bricks and stone slabs became prevalent, enhancing the wall's durability and weather resistance. Uniform bricks simplified and sped up construction, contributing to the wall's structural integrity. To meet the massive material demand, builders established kills near construction sites, producing hundreds of millions, possibly billions, of bricks. One fascinating advancement was the introduction of sticky rice mortar during the Ming Dynasty. Builders mixed sticky rice paste with lime to create a mortar that effectively held bricks together and offered enhanced water resistance and strength. This organic-inorganic composite was revolutionary, making the wall far more durable. Recent studies have highlighted the mortar's ability to withstand significant pressure and resist aging, contributing to the robustness of many wall sections today. Building the Great Wall of China was not just a monumental architectural achievement but also a colossal human endeavor. The workforce required included millions of individuals over the centuries, soldiers, peasants, convicts, and even intellectuals who had fallen out of favor. These laborers were mobilized across various dynasties, each contributing to different sections of the wall. The conditions were incredibly harsh, with minimal supplies, brutal climates, and grueling physical labor. Many laborers did not survive the harsh winters, suffering from exhaustion and malnutrition. Historical records suggest that some of the deceased were buried within the wall itself, leading to the legend of the wall being the world's largest graveyard. Shifting from ancient architectural feats to a modern marvel of engineering, the Bingham Canyon Mine, also known as the Kennecott Copper Mine, stands out. 
Located in the Ochre Mountains southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah, this mine has been an industrial beacon since its inception in 1863. Enos Andrew Wall first developed it in 1898, forming the Boston Consolidated Mining Company. The mine's landscape changed dramatically in 1910 when the Kennecott Copper Corporation acquired it, marking the start of large-scale operations that continue today. It is one of the oldest and most productive mines in the United States. Bingham Canyon is primarily an open pit mine, involving large open pits to access or deposits below the surface. Technological advancements include the first use of large-scale electric shovels in 1926 and haul trucks in 1937, revolutionizing material movement within the mine. Over the years, it has produced over 20 million tons of copper, more than any other mine in the world. Copper isn't the only resource extracted here, significant amounts of gold, silver, and molybdenum are also produced, cementing its status as a cornerstone of global mining. The mine's impact extends beyond production, providing geologists with a detailed cross-section of the Earth's crust and invaluable insights into geological strata and or deposit formations. This has been a boon for economic geology, enhancing our understanding of natural processes that shape our planet. Another intriguing aspect is the mine's influence on aircraft navigation. The sheer size of the excavation has disturbed the local gravitational field, causing compass readings to become erratic for pilots flying overhead. The Bingham Canyon mine is enormous. At its widest point, it spans about 2.5 miles and reaches depths of more than 0.75 miles. To put that into perspective, the pit is so large that two of the world's tallest buildings, the Burj Khalifa, could lay end to end at its base and still be dwarfed by the excavation. The Terracotta Army was more than just afterlife protection for Qin Shi Huang, it symbolized his absolute power and ensured his legacy as the unifier of China. Ancient beliefs held that the afterlife mirrored earthly life, so by surrounding himself with his army, Qin sought to retain his status and dominance beyond death. He needed divine approval, known as the Mandate of Heaven, to legitimize his rule. The scale and detail of the Terracotta Army were meant to show this divine backing. The life-sized soldiers and horses, arranged in battle formations within massive pits, are truly staggering. Creating this masterpiece in a few decades required an assembly line process and large kills. Each soldier has unique features, showcasing incredible detail and artistic effort. The army represents real soldiers, capturing the diversity and spirit of Qin Shi Huang's unified empire. The Terracotta Army's faded paint once displayed dazzling colors, adding another layer of realism. The tomb mound hints at wonders surpassing the terracotta soldiers. Historical texts describe a subterranean microcosm with rivers of mercury and a starry sky of jewels. Modern science supports these descriptions, with high mercury levels found in the soil. Excavating the tomb is risky due to potential booby traps and mercury exposure. The terracotta army wasn't Qin's only preparation for the afterlife. Archaeologists found real weapons, raising questions about whether the army was a distraction from the true burial site. The weapons have a chrome oxide coating, a preservation technique thought to be developed much later. The Terracotta Army's survival over millennia is partly due to ideal conditions and sheer luck, with its discovery in 1974 by farmers digging a well. The Terracotta Army offers a window into an empire at its peak, providing insight into Qin's military machine and centralized bureaucracy. The craftsmanship reflects not only artistic skill but also advanced mass production techniques. The Terracotta Army mirrors Qin's ambition to maintain control even after death, embodying his vision. The excavation is ongoing, with many questions remaining. Scientists are developing new preservation techniques to analyze and recreate the Army's original appearance. The Terracotta Army remains an active archaeological site, continually revealing more about the Qin dynasty and its visionary, sometimes ruthless, emperor. It is a wonder of the world, a fusion of power, history, artistry, and ambition that continues to fascinate. Thanks for watching another episode of Just Discovery. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and press the notification bell for future updates on more exciting videos. See you next time.